We're back to the Neil Haley Show here on the Total Celebrity segment. I'm excited to welcome to the program my special co-host today, Kim Sorrell, author, co-author, I'm an author of Love Is. Kim, thanks for stopping by. And we have an amazing guest today. And it's because I wish I could do this obstacle course. I want to do this obstacle course. I'm a legitimate 610. I had a, a conversation with Akbar about it a couple of times. And he told me he could do it. And I said, dude, I'm 6'10. I don't know if I can do it. And he says, it's gonna be really, it's really tough. So who's our guest today? <laughs> yeah, you wish you could do it. I wish I could do it. I am, I pretend to be 5'2. So I think somewhere height in between is probably a better place to go. Brian Richardson, welcome to the show. You are the executive producer of this amazing show, America Ninja Warriors. I believe you've been nominated for four Emmys, which is blows my mind. I don't know. I don't talk to people who have been nominated for Emmys. Like, this is so cool. So I'm so excited to meet you. I'm from Michigan. You're from Indianapolis, I believe. So go Midwesterners and welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thank you. That's right. Big, go, go, go Big Ten. That's right. <laughs> thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah, well, thanks for being here. I am curious. Is it true? Is there any truth to Ninja Warriors becoming an Olympic sport? Uh, yeah, there's been a, actually, it's very exciting. There's been a, a, a lot of attention and some headlines with that lately. It's um, what they're talking about right now is making uh, Ninja part of an Olympic event called Modern Pentathlon, which is sort of a um, kind of an outdated event, you might say. It's, it's uh, five events which has been around since the Olympics started, I think in the, in, you know, the early part of like 1912 or something. And it was kind of modeled after what an what a army officer would do. So you have shooting, swimming, running, uh, uh, equestrian events. And um, that it, it's, it's a little outdated. Not a lot of people do those events anymore. So they're kind of looking to, to modernize to make it a little more interesting. And so they're talking about replacing the equestrian events, the horse riding, with uh, Ninja. And it would be a sort of a, 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 you know, a sprint through a course and that would be one of the five events. And they've been doing some testing um, just in the last couple of months with some uh, pentathletes and um, seeing you know, how it would go. And so they're talking about doing that potentially in 2028, um, which is exciting just to see it as, as part of that um, event. And then hopefully, at some point, Ninja itself will become a standalone Olympic oh event. It's really blown up around the world. It's, totally really, it, it's really taken off. There's a, there's a lot of things, hoops you have to jump through to get an Olympic sport approved. It has to be something that's, you know, sort of played on, I think, four continents and uh, X number of countries so that it's sort of a worldwide sport, which um, Ninja is really getting up to that. It's, you know, there are, I think... Uh, a couple of dozen versions of sort of American Ninja Warrior that they now do in in Germany, in France, in Israel, and all these different countries, and it's really taken off around the world. So, Brian, did you think when this start when you started with this that it would go to this level? Meaning, thinking about American Ninja Warrior. I mean, like I remember the first couple of seasons, and I started interviewing people, and then they talk about the competition and how the competition got fiercer and fiercer and more and more people then they started having training facilities all over the united states and all over the world where people are training to become american ninja warriors it was like kind of like almost like this fad or this this new thing and now to talking about an, an olympic sport so did you think it was ever going to be this yeah it's 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 crazy how much it's grown really in the last you know 10 years or so it it, it had a, a kind of an interesting evolution it, it started in japan and it was this, you know, if you've ever seen sort of the Japanese kind of game shows, they're a little kind of, uh, you know, kind of goofy. And this was called Sasuke, which was the, the sort of the, the birth of, of the Ninja Warrior uh, phenomenon. And it was done on a, on a, you know, kind of a raw in a, in a dirt field behind the, the uh, Tokyo Broadcasting System. And it was called Sasuke. And it they started airing it on G4, which was a, a cable channel here in, in America, which was kind of primarily aimed at, you know, young males, gamers, that type, that type programming. And it became very popular. And so the people at G4 said, why don't we do an American version of this? So they started in America, kind of, um, you know, low production value kind of thing. It was the, the first one was in a parking lot behind a Costco. And, um, 
but it, it became popular. And the people who came out and did it were not professionals. They were every man uh, type people, you know, who worked at the shoe store and, um, you know, accountants who just wanted to kind of challenge themselves and have this adventure. Um, and, and then it became popular on G4 and NBC, which owned was sort of the corporate parent of G4 said, you know, that looks kind of interesting. Why don't we put that on network TV? And production values were, were up, um, you know, uh, Arthur Smith Ace, at A. Smith and Company sort of took over the show and made it sort of ready for prime time and added a lot of lights, camera and some, and some made it a, a prime time show. And that's when it really started to take off and, and it became uh, something that people would train for a year round instead of something that people would come out once a year and sort of, you know, try their luck. And now it's, it's, it's amazing. There are ninja gyms in virtually every city in America. Some of them have three or four and there are regional competitions almost every weekend. It's become a thing now where uh, parents put their kids into ninja where they used to, you know, play little league or pop horn or football or do karate lessons or gymnastic lessons. And now they take their kids to ninja and they go to these classes two or three times a week. And then they maybe go to a competition, you know, out of town, you know, once a month or so. And there are, there are leagues and, and different things going on all the time. There's probably a ninja competition going on somewhere this weekend that people are traveling to right now. Nice. My goodness, that is, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. that's a lot. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and in kind of a short amount of time, right? Like what yeah. kind of a time span are you talking? Well, it's really been in the last 10 years. This is the 14th year of the show, but we've been on, uh, this is our uh, ninth full season on NBC. And that's when it really sort of blew up. Um, before it was kind of a niche thing on, on cable that people were aware of and maybe people who were, you know, uh, watching G4 were aware of or, or watched, um, you know, Japanese programming. But it's really taken, o taken off in the last 10 years, um, kind of with the, sh the success of the show. And now it's sort of a thing that you can, you know, come up to pretty much anybody and say, hey, you'd be good on a Ninja Warrior course. And everybody knows what that is. It's become part of the right. you know, lexicon of of, of and I think in the last five, six years, after certain things started blowing up, certain athletes really became very popular and known. And I've been on a lot of radio tours interviewing those stars. They became iconic themselves. And that really helped the whole thing. That the, 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 the glitz and the glamour of American Ninja Warrior reminds me a little bit of um, um, American Gladiator mixed with professional wrestling and, uh, and, uh, and other types of events. It's, it's an event going to these things, right? And I think that's another key part of what makes it a success. Yeah, our, 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 uh, our stars have really become stars around uh, America. They get recognized in airports and, and um, you know, at restaurants and everything. They have huge social media followings and now, most of them are, are become almost like professional athletes where they get paid basically because they are a famous ninja athletes and they will go to gym openings or to, you know, uh, they promote a product and, and things like that. And they can make their living as a ninja athlete now. Um, it, it really is something that, especially the, for kids, are probably more likely to, to recognize someone like Joe Morofsky, the weatherman, who's, who's a, you know, famous... Uh, one of our athletes, or, or Jesse Graff, they're more likely to, to, you know, recognize those athletes than maybe somebody in, you know, professional sports, somebody in, in the NBA or a pro golfer or some things like that. Kids are really tuned into it. Yeah, what a, and what a great thing. And how fit you have to be. I mean, my word, these people are fit beyond fit. You know, it's one thing to be a sprinter, but to be a ninja, like you said, training has got to be tough. Yeah, well, it's 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 a unique sport in, in that a lot of the people who are who have success on the show were not sort of your your stereotypical jock. They were not the people who played football or basketball or had you know a lot of size. You know, you, you mentioned Neil that your size might keep you from being a, a great ninja athlete, and it's it would be a challenge. I'm waiting for you to invite me to try to the course sometime, right? Wow. I'll come. I'll come. I'll come to one of them and then do it, you know. Open invitation. Next next season, you are, you're going to do it. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. in. I'm in. Yeah. I definitely have to reach out to Avery. Okay, to I, I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been training. I've been training to say I'm making my pro wrestling comeback at 49. Uh, so, you know, what, let's let's do it. Let's, let's add another thing to the to the to the list. Yeah, we would love it. 
Um, but yeah, the, the, the typical ninja athlete, they, they um, you know, the, probably the biggest thing is a, a strength to weight ratio. Um, our, our, our typical, you know, the, the, the athletes who do really well are, you know, maybe five, eight, 150 pounds and less. Um, you know, if, you've, if you're much over that, you're carrying a lot of weight as you go across some of these obstacles, you know, to carry 200 pounds, you know, and land on your fingertips is a tough thing. So we, some of the best athletes we have right now are, you know, 120, 130 pounds because they're just so light and just kind of fly through things. Um, and it's, it's been interesting because um, even though, uh, especially in the beginning, a lot of our athletes came from gymnastics or wrestling or track and field, we also get a lot of uh, people who come to the sport late who maybe didn't know they were athletes. You know, they were in the marching band or in theater or something in high school. And they're sitting on the couch watching with their kids and, and, and they watch the show and they go, you know what? I think I could do that. That looks like something I can do. Because it, we get a lot of those sort of couch to the course and so maybe their kids challenge them or their, you know, their wife or, or significant other says, yeah, you think you can do it? Well, why don't you try out for it? And they come out and do it. And, and it's something they didn't think they were athletes. And they realize there is something in them that, that allows them to do it. I think you know, at its heart, what we do in Ninja is sort of the things we did as kids, you know, it's, it's the monkey bars going across, yeah. it's swinging on a rope swing in the backyard, it's, it's, uh, you know, balancing yourself on the curb as you walk to school, all those, you know, simple things we did as kids in school, and it takes us back to that, that sort of childlike, this is fun, this is not working out, this is not going to the gym and lifting 200 pounds, this is just fun stuff to swing around on, on bars and things, and it really brings in, a, a, we've had a lot of people sort of uh, come to it later in life who didn't think they were athletes, and all of a sudden they're hooked. Wow, quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. speaking of the course, how do, it, it seems to me that somebody is sadistic that is making up the course because it seems like it gets harder every year and more challenging. I don't know if that's true or not, please speak to that, but who makes up the course and uh, what are some things, some new things that you're adding or have added? Yeah, I mean, along with, as we were talking about sort of the growth of the sport and people who, be, who now, you know, train year round, they've just gotten so good that we have to keep, you know, upping the ante because we'll come up with a really, difficult uh obstacle that that we think nobody can do and in the first year maybe a lot of them can't they'll go home build this and put it either in their their local gym or put it in their backyard and they'll master it so that by the next season they figure this one out so we always have to stay one step ahead of them with our obstacle development and we have a whole process of sort of uh, you know, R&D of testing things. And, and the, we start months before the season with ideas on a piece of paper. And then we'll build a sort of a prototype in the warehouse. We'll have testers come out and try that and see how it plays sort of in a small scale. And we'll be, you know, we need to make those six inches further apart, or we need to make the, the landing and two inches is too easy. So let's make the landing just one inch for them to, to grab onto, things like that. And it's a real process of, of testing. We have, by the time our ninjas sort of tried on the course, it may have gone through, you know, two dozen different iterations um, to make it where we think it's difficult, but not so difficult that, you know, the best people can't get through it. Um, you know, this year in particular, we've tried to um, sort of have fun with things. We've had stuff based on sort of a carnival game, um, huh. you know, where, you, you know, if, it was almost like ski ball where you had to uh, roll the ball into one of the three shoots. And if you got it into a, the right shoot, it was an easier swing. If you got it into the wrong one, it was a longer one to catch. Um, we had a thing called the giant roller coaster, which was basically hold on to a bar as it went through uh, a couple of, uh, of ramps and it flies you through the air. So, you know, we have to stay ahead of, of the ninjas. So we're always trying to be creative and come up with you know, new and interesting ideas that'll challenge them and, and also be fun for the audience watching at home. See, I think it's fantastic. And who would have thought like any other Olympic sport where it gets more complex all the time, right? So there you go. So you're at the point where you're transcending what sports could become the next types of sports that will be created. 
Do you feel that American Ninja Warrior, they're going to people that are going to create other sports out of this? I saw one that was on ESPN where they were jumping on tables and stuff that was in, indoors and stuff that, that involved almost kind of like American Ninja Warrior. So I think you're going to see a lot more new invented sports coming up from this whole process. Yeah, I think the one you're talking about is World Chase Tag, um, which yeah. was, um, you know, had a lot of similarities. In fact, some of our ninjas have, have been on that and done, done really well. Um, yeah, there's been a few sort of spinoffs or, or um, shows that kind of tried to tap into that same kind of, uh, you know, what we do on Ninja. Um, it's, it's really interesting to see how, it, how it's evolved and everything. Um, you know, we, we've taught, we kind of joke about at some point, we're just going to have to put like razor blades on the edge of, of oh, obstacles yeah. because to make, <laughs> make it, to make it, because they've just gotten so good, these, especially these younger ninjas who just train seven days a week. And it's, you know, no matter what challenge we put in front of them, you know, you have to uh, have to keep uh, making it uh, more difficult. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if ever there will be head to head competition at the same time, like Hunger Games or some, hopefully not like Hunger Games, but, you know, something yeah. like that. But, well, but one, of the, one, of, yeah. one of the spinoffs we had of, 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 of Ninja was it was basically a. a, a a side-by-side -side racing concept. It was called Team Ninja Warrior and the Ninja versus Ninja, where it was two, two people uh, racing side-by-side -side down the same course. And at some point, the, the, the course would sort of cross and they had to compete on the same track, essentially. And that was really fun because they're just sort of, you know, trying to elbow each other out and that kind of thing. And that's something that especially some of the um, international versions have really gone to. And I think you know, you'll see different uh, versions like that that puts people sort of running against each other. How long have you been around with, Amer been doing American Ninja Warrior yourself? You've been the producer, the executive producer the whole time? Um, nine years, basically since it, since the show came to NBC. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, so how much of that, so how much of a team do you need to really have the success that you have production wise for this? I mean, right. like, right. putting this team together, to make this happen is it, you have experience level in sports before doing producing something like this to be able to figure out the camera angles all the different things the glitz and the glamour of this amazing uh spectacle and also production for television yeah it's it's a it's a big team it's there's about 200 people to put the show together and we have a lot of of, of people who are uh uh you know, our director came, comes from a sports background. He was an NBC sports guy who's directed, you know, Indy 500s and Kentucky, Kentucky derbies and NFL football and that kind of thing and brought that sort of sports mentality to it. And we have a, a huge team of, for art department and lighting and, and casting and everyone else, um, you know, because we've been around for a while. It is a big machine that sort of knows how to put together uh, each year. But, you know, when we roll into town, it's just a, a, a it's like the circus. You know, we've got 18 wheeler after 18 wheeler who roll in, um, build the course. It takes, you know, a, a, a couple of weeks to get the course set up, um, build it, put, fill the pools with the water and all that stuff. And it, it's, it's a machine to make it happen. Yeah, it's amazing where you came from and where you are after just nine years. Because there's so much more than the sport itself to become popular, to get the notoriety that you've gotten and make the show really, really fun to watch. So that's some pretty great leadership, I would say, in that amount of time. Yeah. Well, it's, I, I'm a small part of it. There's a, there's, you know, there are uh, some other uh, executive producers starting with uh, Arthur Smith at the top, but uh, yeah, we have a great team and everybody, because we've had some continuity over the years, everybody kind of knows what to do when the season starts up and what we need to do. And it usually just changes, you know, whatever location we're in, are we inside, are we outside? But yeah, there's a lot of great people who, who make this show happen. All right, so what's next for American Ninja Warrior? I Meaning like the contestants, up and coming contestants coming up, people to watch now for the show. Well, we're, we're in the middle of our, our, our 14th overall season right now. We're about to start our, um, our Las Vegas season finale episodes. This is sort of the, the best of the best have now made it to Las Vegas. And it's basically the final, uh, final people are going to fight to get through the four stages in Las Vegas to win 
the million dollar prize. Um, and, you know, it's always, uh, we, we introduced teenagers a couple of years ago, we lowered the age limit to 15. And that's really opened the doors to a, a whole new wave of talent. These kids who have basically grown up doing nothing but ninja and because mm -hmm. they, their schedule is a little more uh, open than you know an adult who's got a job and, and family and things to worry about. These kids, some of them will go straight from school to the ninja gym for four hours a day. And so they're really talented and only 15, 16, 17 years old. And you're gonna see um, those, those kids really tear it up in Las Vegas, along with some, um, you know, fan favorites who've maybe been around for a while that fans of the show have, have followed their, you know, their uh, successes and failures along the way. And that's another great part of our show is that people come back year after year. We've got fan favorites that, you know, we've seen them literally grow up. We've seen them get married, have kids, you know, maybe go through an injury and then they come back so a lot of great stories of people to follow from year to year. And then there's always a new face who surprises you. You know, this year we have a, uh, you know, a, a, a 16 year old uh, girl from New Mexico. She's a, a rock climber and she's just amazing. Her name's Katie Bone, who's just, you know, done things you can't believe. She's a type one diabetic mm. who wears an insulin pump on her arms and, you know, still is able to do some amazing things. She's been a, a big breakout star this year. Oh, wow. So definitely. And people could check out American Ninja Warrior by going to NBC.com as well and follow on all the different social media, right? Yep. And we're on, you know, every Monday night on NBC. And then uh, we they repeat us on Friday nights on NBC. All right. And what's new for you? Any other projects you have going that you whether it's happening right now, Brian? Well, literally, this is, you know, I said it's a big machine. And so we're already, we're still, um, you know, editing the final episodes. And then we start getting ready for the next season and start doing, you know, uh, location scouting for next year. We start the process with casting and a lot of planning for next year because it is such a, a big machine. You know, when we, we need a big, uh, we need big locations. So we're reserving, you know, football size stadiums or large plots of land and, and places. So it takes a while. Awesome. And do we have social media? You can follow you, Brian, check you out. Where can we go? No, that's okay. You're good. <laughs> you follow, You're follow, the, follow the show. <laughs> you follow the show. Got it. Got it. And Kim, where can we connect with you? Where's best place? Uh, Kim Sorrell.com. Um, Sorrell is spelled S O R R E L L E. Way too many letters, two E's, two L's, two R's, but Kim Sorrell.com. If you just um, Google Love Is, the name of the book, I should come up. I should be readily available. Brian, I would love to send you a copy of the book, actually. If Great. I can get your address after or whatever, I would, I would love to be able to share it with you. We definitely awesome. connect. We'll connect you to Avery for sure. You can check me out at neilhaley.com, the media giant. Appreciate you guys. And it was a great show. Brian, yeah. one more thing. Go ahead. I was just going to say, and I'm going to see you, we're going to see you both on the course next year, right? Oh yes, that's happening. And, and, and Avery, we're going to keep this going and have more conversations with Brian and other people from American Ninja Wear in a different way. And I appreciate everyone listening and watching the Neil Haley show guys. Take care.